and welcome back, boys and girls, for another special edition of the Michael Deacon Program. Joining me tonight is Mr. Jason Quid. He's a researcher, author, and expert in energy healing, past life regression, and astral travel with over 25 years of experience. He is the co-author of several books, including Forbidden Knowledge and The Labyrinth, and has appeared on numerous radio shows and podcasts. Jason is also the founder of the Crystal Sun Healing Center in Ontario, Canada, where he provides energy healing services and teaches workshops on various topics. His work explores the paranormal and metaphysical, with a focus on interdimensional entities and multidimensional time travel. Now, without further ado, let's get to brass tacks and bring in Mr. Jason Quid. Here I am. You're alive. Right. And yeah, we have a lot to talk about here tonight. Sounds good. Glad ready to, to yeah. dive into whatever area you want to guide. Oh, yeah. Lots to uh, talk about here. And of course, Bob Mitchell, another man who, um, you know, we both knew. And of course, you knew him way better than I did. But, you know, I interviewed him multiple times. And, you know, he, ta he talked about you a number of times. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he, I, again, like I said, he really uh, liked you, respected you. Yeah, uh, Bob and I, um, we clicked like instantly. And I know there's like a an age difference. Uh, I don't even know <laughs> how much an age difference, but um, we, um, we became like best friends and uh, we talked about what we loved which was yeah. paranormal consciousness aliens you name it and uh we just had like a ton of fun um so you know working with bob and and writing the book and doing all the shows with him was like such an amazing time in my life but it was, you know it was a very short time <laughs> of of my life um i think um i knew him only for maybe a year oh, okay year and a half like it was fast but uh, those were that was a good year oh yeah yeah you sort of uh, blew up there on that around that time um well that was all bob's <laughs> that was all bob's doing bob's doing yeah i of was course, just of uh, i was just um a local person here in toronto or ontario and um i used to go around um i was very active in the dowsing community and they have a, a society of dowsers here in ontario um so i would go to a lot of these meetings and uh, the person running um many meetings around ontario um she also did conferences she did like uh, dowsing conferences hypnotism co conferences or hypnosis conferences not hip and um then she uh decided to go in the direction of aliens and uh -huh. she uh, put a conference together called uh, alien cosmic expo and um she called me up one day and she goes i know you've been you know you talk about this and that but um i think this other community wants to uh check out your story and uh she wouldn't take no for an answer she put me on the schedule <laughs> so it was it was my first experience in the uh the ufo culture mm. and um i was right there sitting with stanton friedman and and uh um, stephen greer and uh, richard doland stephen bassett and me <laughs> like, and you and 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 me and Bob Mitchell was there obviously, and, yeah. and that's that's how I met Bob, and I uh, came to one of my talks, and um, he was blown away. He never heard anybody talk about those topics before. It was all new to him, and he was Bob was like a kid. He he loved this type of information. So um, right after he came up to me and asked if uh, he could uh, write. Um, part of my story in his in his new book um and if you if you remember bob's books um they were basically experiencer books right and he would interview like 20 plus people and then you know each person got a, like a couple paragraphs or even a chapter and um i said sure and i'll i'll be a part of your book and um we we got together and he interviewed me and at the end of the interview he's he's like he goes, I don't think I could use any of this in my new book. Um, 
because uh, this is just too wild. Um, how about we write a book together and mm. it could be like your introduction into this community. And um, that's, it was Bob. It was all Bob. Bob, Bob brought me in and uh, you know, it, it lit like a, a wildfire. Um, the, you know, people talk about experiencers. I think that was the time where people were really into it back in uh, 2015. Right, right. And um, my story blew up. I, we, me and him did radio shows like maybe once a day or even sometimes twice a day. We were very busy. And um, then he left. He passed away very quickly. And suddenly it's just me here. We were supposed to do this all together. <laughs> and he, he left me. And he left very you. Very quickly, he left. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's the, the, the origin story of uh, how I came to be part of this community. And now I'm, you know, um, headliner at uh, Contact in the Desert, which is it's still crazy to me that uh, that's where I am. And it's all because of Bob. Yes, Bob was a pretty interesting gentleman in his own right, and, you know, I liked Bob very much, and I interviewed him way back in 2016, uh, shortly after the uh, book Forbidden Knowledge released. Yeah, and uh, that's, um, unfortunately, that book is not available anymore. Um, we we took it down um, maybe a, a year after he passed. I, I just didn't feel like it was it was right anymore to have that up. And uh, there was a lot of... See, here's the thing is... Uh, it, getting into this community, I was I was quite naive. And, uh, what do you I'm mean a little more mature. <laughs> what what do you mean you were more it. naive? As in... As in... I was very opened. And uh, in that book, Forbidden Knowledge, mm -hmm. it was a very personal book. Um, it, it was almost like um, therapy for me. It's like I, I tried to sit down with Bob and, and basically write all the experiences that have happened to me over my lifetime, like a true experiencer book. And um, the issue is, is that I put my family members in there with all their names my oh. teachers in there with all their names, you know. Yeah, so you did actually. Like, yeah, now I remember. So it was, <laughs> uh, it was like I opened up, like every person that was on my path, I spoke about them. Yeah. You know, so anybody could just look them up and give them a call. Yeah, I have because, a, I, I have a copy of that book here somewhere in the room. Yeah. So it's, uh, it was very personal, and um, I just felt like. I overexposed myself. You kind of did. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't... I, look, when I was writing this with Bob, like, I was just doing dowsing meetings, and those are like 20 to 50 people at the most. Yeah. And local. And then I didn't think... In my mind, I never thought that this would go past Toronto. Yeah, Canadian Toronto. market, right. And then you... Are suddenly, you know, kind of in the in the American the scene here in that that circle, and again, a much different than the Canadian culture, I would imagine. <laughs> exactly. Obviously, yes. Exactly. So it, it was. Um, I wasn't expecting that. I, I truly wasn't. And and once I realized that, like, I'm getting emails from people, you know, talking about experience that I've had in childhood or, or, you know, could I introduce them to my friends or this and that? Like, right. You know what? <laughs> um, I gotta, you know, I need to rewrite the book, um, and do it in a very different way. And, uh, to kind of, you know, keep the experiences, but kind of take it as like, take a step back in separation just a little. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I hope to rewrite. Oh, okay. Um, something to do with um, being an experiencer and about the astral world and entities and and basically the knowledge that I've learned after all these years of doing it. Um, but I mean, it's 
is quite a story and I have to, that's going to take quite a lot of time to actually sit down and write this out. Right. I think you definitely should do it. A revision of uh, Forbidden Knowledge, Revelations of a Multi-Dimensional Time Traveler. I, I definitely feel <laughs> we need a updated version of it. And you, you could, of course, include some, some, some stuff about Bob and maybe take out some of those names. Yeah, I, that's a that's a good that's a good thing to to put in there right. something about bob mm -hmm. and um yeah it i i should get on it basically i think it's time but it's time but it, it is hard to write a book i mean i've been asked to do so myself actually the, for, for the first time i didn't think i'd ever write a book about myself and my own experiences about the paranormal and ufos and all this jazz and uh, it, it takes a long time i mean I haven't even finished writing the first chapter yet. Wow. Wow. Well, I like during COVID, I was stuck in my house. Um, so I, I rewrote a book. I rewrote the Egyptian Posters book. And um, and then I, I wrote a completely other book that I had no intention of writing. It just came to me and I, I had to write it, uh, which is which is Astral Genesis. Um, and I have half another book <laughs> written already oh my. for the, for the second, uh, Egyptian postures, but you know, you have to also deal with life in between That's the hard all part. of those things. And, um, so I always put dates and say, you know, the Egyptian postures part two will come out maybe in a year and maybe, um, the experiencer forbidden knowledge type of book, uh, maybe two years from now, you know? give give something to look forward to right right very nice and of course um jason i forgot to say welcome to the program by the way oh we're recording now yeah we are oh okay don't worry i'll edit out some of the stuff there <laughs> so you know when i put it together nobody will ever know yeah i'm just i'm just playing there you go we'll leave that part in though good that's a fun part and by the way, did you enjoy your experience at Contact in the Desert? I am a huge fan of Contact in the Desert. And, you know, to, to go there myself and share my experiences, my knowledge, my new research, it's the place to do it or one of the places to do it because the people there are so open and so knowledgeable that, you know, someone will walk up to the booth and have a conversation with me and it's going to be like man these people are so knowledgeable that they're teaching me something so um, i learn a lot going to these things and I, you get to see friends that you only see maybe once every couple of years which is um i really look forward to that so for me it's like a vacation going to like summer camp <laughs> you know it's like for adults, you know, you're going to go and have this great time. And there's another event coming up. Um, hopefully you'll be there too. It's, um, oh, what is it? Called? It's the uh, done with Adrian, uh, disclosure fest at the, uh, the Luxor in Las Vegas coming up in November. Oh yes. Uh, I, I did hear of that. But and it's Vegas, like everybody, yeah. everybody's going like, if you look at the, the list of the speakers, it's like everybody <laughs> is coming to that thing. So it's going to be quite, quite the show. Oh, wow. That's something nice to uh, look forward to. And of course, you were next to my good friend, Brad Olson. And, uh, you know, I'm curious. I actually didn't see you standing next to him. Is he taller than you or are you taller than um, our friend uh, Bigfoot? Uh, well, uh, I don't know his exact height. It's got to be like close to seven feet he's taller than you he is taller than me oh man. by a couple inches and you're pretty uh, tall by the way thank you i'm i'm was born that way yeah um, right so was brad you're and right i was <laughs> uh my grandfather was exactly the same size as me um uh, you know i if i took his jacket today it would fit me perfectly so um but brad um it, it's kind of weird um, because I'm usually the tallest person in the right. crowd. Right, <laughs> yeah. And then um, I 
I, I purposely try to sit <laughs> next to Brad. That's awesome. <laughs> because um, he hates it, like, you know, um, because he's always the tallest person all the, the time of course he just sticks out wherever he goes you know he's just so damn tall and you know the first time i met him i i just said to him i'm like you know thank you for hanging out with me because now i look completely normal yeah you look like a normal guy next to him <laughs> yeah and so he doesn't like when i talk about his height no he, I, he's, he's a he's a great guy he i, I love uh, brad by the way he is definitely a, a great guy and you know there's so many people in this circuit that are good people some little lesser than others but that's a different story but brad's pretty genuine i i really respect brad so much oh yeah yeah and he doesn't have any back pain which is incredible right <laughs> Do you when you when you have a when you have a tall yeah. person like even for me I can't sit anywhere I can't sit on like an airplane or a car or like any the, 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 the chairs are not made for us I know we we are so small and short compared to you you two um, legs hang off the bed it's, <laughs> it's there's trouble you know by the way going back to the book for one second here back sure. to you, uh, forbidden knowledge I forgot to ask you this question in regards to some of the names that you listed in the book have do they know they are in the book by the way i'm sure they do oh yeah yeah every person knows they're in the book i've given everybody copies okay and, okay okay and, and no uh, nobody has an issue no no issues no one's been harassed no one no nothing like that everyone's cool everyone's open well like uh one of my teachers um the algonquin shaman um who i have a lot of respect for um i stopped doing healing work um, in 2016 or 2017, I stopped doing any type of energy or healing work because, uh, or publicly doing it because I broke my back. And ever since then, I've stopped doing any work with people. So I still get emails, you know, uh, for sessions and I just forward it to him. <laughs> so yeah, I hope he appreciates that. But, uh, you know, so people still know that I have contact with all these people because I'll link people up because I'm not doing these things anymore. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I'm glad everything is um, smooth sailing then. Yes. yes. Very nice. Very nice. And of course that book, you know, I liked it because you sort of talked about a post apocalyptic sort of future. And that's kind of, you know, the theme of this program. It's always been sort of centered around the, uh, and times and my fascination for what I think will eventually happen the earth will cease to exist eventually either by the sun or some other horrific sort of incident and I always like asking the guests this question would you want to be there for pretty much the remaining remaining time that uh, humans have on this earth before it just ceases to exist well it's probably ended many more times, times before than we can count right um, and there have been survivors obviously or an evolution of those survivors um, would I want to be there um, well let's say you're on a different uh, let's say you were on the moon <laughs> or on Mars <laughs> I you know what from what I've uh, from what I've seen and a lot and people probably won't like this answer but I'd probably want to be close to d the destruction to end it quickly. <laughs> I would really? want to survive. Yeah. Yeah, it would be very difficult. You would want to go down too with the ship. You wouldn't want to just watch it from afar, you know, somewhere safe. Well, uh, I'm. W if we, ha if you know, in a perfect it, sort of scenario. Um. Yeah, I, I, I guess if you were prepared and you would survive and carry on, um, you know, to I guess teach the next generation or things like that then absolutely but if there was like what what you're talking about is end of days like yeah there is no there There's is no, no going back right that. yeah you got to get out of here and that's that's always a scenario that i i like i don't know why maybe i'm cynical but i just like playing that out in my head and you know i've always had dreams of this sort of thing myself that's why this book forbidden knowledge has always been one that's fascinating to me well, if you would go back and listen to like the first interviews I I did, which were around 2015, um, you have to remember in 2015, those 
journeys or visions, whatever anybody wants to call them, those happen around 2002 and 2003. All right. So that's like 20 years ago. Right. And in, in 2015, the way I spoke about these events, it was like, I don't see that occurring in our future. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't the time where I actually saw it. Like for me, life was good. Um, I didn't, I like, I thought everything was okay back then. And I thought in my mind, it's like, I can't really see the build up to my visions. You know what I mean? I, I understand. Yes. But what 20, about 20, 20 yeah. years later, I'm sitting here. It's, it's mm -hmm. 2023. And I'm, I'm looking at the world situation, right? I'm looking at the military going to different places. I'm looking at the economy. I'm, I'm, I'm studying all these things. I'm like, holy shit. Like yeah. it, it, things are kind of pushing in a way that I saw 20 it's, years ago. They're kind of lining up, um, Jason. And it's, it's, it's bothering me. That's all I'm going to say. It's bothering yes. me because I don't like talking about the stuff I went through. Um, and uh, they see, I don't like talking about it. I wrote a freaking book about it. <laughs> I go on radio shows. I talk about it, but it still bothers me. I know because... it's the reality of what can happen. It bothers you. Yeah. And obviously I don't want to see any of that happen sure, sure. in our future. Um, I love this planet. I love life on this planet, you know, as do I, but eventually that will happen though. That that's the, the, the thing, you know, that's something uh, that's a possible scenario in this reality that we're in. See the, the issue that I have is you know, let's say an asteroid comes and wipes us out. That's, that's nature. You know what I mean? Sure. And, uh, so, so yeah, let, let's say the dinosaurs are wiped out, you know, extinction level event and that could happen to us too maybe it did already happen to us like twelve thousand years ago which evidence points Suggested to something did. like that happening yeah. right um what bothers me is that there are people here psychopathic people that want the world to end that want to push an end of the world scenario yeah and these are the people that are in power. These are the untouchables. So it's like, a man, you know, we talk about climate change. I, I don't even, who, who cares about climate change when you get people in the highest levels that just want war 24 seven and yeah. just want to annihilate the planet, you know? So yeah, we don't cut down some trees, but then we'll just bomb a city. Like it makes no sense. <laughs> it doesn't. Right. And, so, you know, and, and you have all these other people like Elon Musk, you know, wanting to sort of do that sort of shift this sort of humanity, uh, uh, you know, the human, us, human beings to, uh, you know, to Mars, you know, the, a lot of other people want to do that. Yeah. And if that, first of all, all these I wouldn't want to be the first people on Mars. I wouldn't, I, it would take many generations of infrastructure and building to have anything out there reasonable for life. Um, you're, you're going to like the har a, a extremely harsh environment where you're basically going to need environmental pods like biodomes, you know, send Pauly Shore out there. <laughs> Pauly build. Shore. Yeah. Well, you know, biodome. Biodome. Yeah. It's a classic. Yeah. But that's basically what it would be like. You would be locked in a biodome uh, for your survival, and your life would depend on that. Uh, so that it, it's just another cage. So you're escaping this hellhole if there is a destruction of this planet. You're going to go to an even worse hell hellhole. But it's like Eden because you're in this tiny enclosure that has life and you know you're just glad to be alive it, you know you could think of that as like a lifeboat for the future but that's going to be a harsh reality like to live in those type of conditions absolutely absolutely but that's one scenario that i would find myself wanting to be a part of <laughs> to be honest to save myself and um get away from that you know to be safe away from uh, the destruction of earth uh, and start over somewhere else I, I would find that to be 
pretty fascinating. I I used to say something that was very cynical. Uh-oh. And now that's you're reminding me of, of what I used to say is that, you know, the only the only the only thing to get you off this planet is a pine box. You know, your body is the earth. Like literally. You're, and when you die, your body goes back to the earth. You know, we're we're made from the electromagnetic field of this planet, back the elements the stars. of this planet. Right. I know. I know we're made of stars. That we, but 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 seriously, the 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 physiology of a human being, if you when you study it, you know that it can't survive in space. You would need to create artificial electromagnetic fields. You'd have to create uh, basically Earth-like conditions for the human body to be uh, to survive. But even when you go out into space, just being in zero gravity, you start to die. That's why you can't be out there for so long. Your body starts to, d- to die. And if you go to another planet that has a different gravity, different weather, different elements in the air and the earth, uh, different electromagnetic field. So it's a different frequency. You're going to take the earth body that's developed its mind to the resonance of this planet and drop it in something completely foreign. Uh, You know, when you look at it from that perspective, I think the human being would have to evolve and it would take at least 500 to a thousand years um, to accustom, customize the, the the biology of the body to live on a completely different planet, and that you know, a lot, people don't think about it in that respect. They think, oh, you get on a spaceship and you step on a planet, and great. But yeah, and everything's fine. It's yeah, but it's completely it's a completely different thing. Like even look at the size of the of the planet. Right. Yeah. There's a lot you know. to uh, take into consideration when we're talking about that sort of thing and the harsh conditions one would have to endure and uh, yeah it's a it's a pain in the ass but i mean eventually eventually we we might see that is what i'm proposing here if there might be a time if we can create technology that can duplicate the most perfect um the most perfect environment like earth on a foreign world that that is basically the only way to do it so yeah, we'd have to become terraformers right you know and who but you know we are destined to do this it it seems to be our projection in evolution is to leave the planet um the the question is how long will that jump take right well, That's like the Elon Musk said, you know, maybe 50 to 100 years. Sure. Maybe that could be the first step. Um, but who knows? Maybe another 200 years before we, you know, start to actually step on these other worlds with tourism. Right. That's another thing. The whole space tourism. Why not? I'm not actually uh, wanting to do that. I'm actually afraid of heights, Jason. Well, that's no, the hell one, no one can hear you scream in space. <laughs> that's so true. You're good. Right. Nobody would be able to hear me or see me. I'd be lost in space like a, a Russian astronaut, which is terrifying Did, if you've heard that audio. Uh, no, I haven't. You don't want to hear that sort of thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a thing of nightmares. But I, I remember Virgin Galactic being one of the uh, companies that want to do the whole space tourism thing. So you're telling me, Jason, you would uh, do it. You would go into space. If I was, if, if I money. lived in that time period, I don't think we live in that time period. Uh, maybe when I'm an elderly man, and you know, great grandchildren are going to be like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go up to the the Moon Hotel for like a spa weekend." <laughs> right. There's a conference up there, Jason. We need you. Well, you know, we need then you I'll there. go because it's a conference. Yeah. <laughs> well, Virgin Galactic seems to be the first one. I mean, they just put out an article the other day about it. I just looked it up right now. Wow. So they're they're getting down. You know, they want to do it. 
the first commercial space tourism flights before the end of June, they're saying. Well, how much would that be? A lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Only about $200,000. No big deal. Just just 200000 I think I'm seeing 200000 or 4500000 Oh. Oh. That's what I'm seeing here. Yeah, it... it it sounds like if it's two hundred thousand dollars, it might be just a, a short trip to like you know see the curve or mm. not the curve, or whatever you are observing, and then um, maybe four hundred and fifty to be up there longer. But uh, it's not made for regular folk. No, I, you know, not at all. I think you have to be in a certain physical condition to go out there, right? Um, in my in my mind, I I would like I said you go into space you're dying. Right. That's that's biology. So uh, come back to Earth, put your feet to the ground, and breathe the atmosphere. That that's your that's literally your life. You're in the womb. Like that's what the Earth is. The you're 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 still in the the, the womb of Mother Earth. And the moment you start to leave it physically. You're going to start dying. You begin to die. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we're seeing that right now with uh, those people that went inside that submarine. Oh. They're probably I, dead I, by I... now. <laughs> In my opinion. I mean, it's been a long-ass time. I I don't know. I don't know how much time. I didn't really read the article. I, I, I heard about it somewhere. But that's the thing is, like, just exploring the planet can get you is killed dangerous enough exactly you don't even need to go to space and the ocean like they say it's not really explored we don't really know what's down there uh, and no, being why don't we a, open a, a right. city pardon me i was gonna say being uh you know that you are from canada or as my canadian listeners like to refer to it as canadia um have you spent any time out in the ocean out here like in california going to the beach swimming around anything like that um not really mm. i go to i go to florida a lot oh, okay and I, florida. I used to go swimming in the ocean but there's you know i don't think i've ever went where i didn't see a jellyfish swimming right next to my head oh so and you see the sharks they're coming closer so yes the ocean is also dead that's terrifying <laughs> Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm paranoid being out there in the ocean swimming around. I am scared shitless, Jason. I gotta be honest. Have you ever felt like oh, a, yeah. a current yes. come and take you? Yeah, it happened, yeah. It's happened to me before. The waves it's have this... knocked me over. I've been sucked in. Oh, it's scary as hell. It is so scary because you're swimming, but you're you're swimming forward, you're going backwards. Mm -hmm. So... Um... Yeah, I, I like the land. I like the land, too. Screw going up in the air and going in the ocean. I mean, that's not where we belong, obviously. I live by a lake. I love the lake. You can go jumping in that and be fine. Yeah, exactly. You won't be afraid of uh, maybe a shark or something else. No. Uh, yeah, the lakes are great, especially in Canada. Right. And another thing, though, swimming in the ocean, if something touches your, your leg or anything, you just want to pee yourself out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that you're not someone who likes like scuba diving. You don't like being in, in like uh, you don't like parachuting. Nothing like that. You you're like a normal guy like myself, Jason, which is admirable. Yes, yes, and uh, you I'm, make plenty I'm of sense. I'm slowly here. getting back into things. Like um, I've been very fearful of anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, since I hurt myself, you hurt. Oh yeah, you hurt yourself. Since, since I broke my back, yeah. it's like even going on a bicycle. I'm like, you know, if I fall off that bike, I could really hurt myself because, you know, I'm still not a hundred percent. Right. So it's like uh, I'm just taking it laid back and easy. I'm in my forties now. I'm just like, this is my midlife crisis. I'm just chilling. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you need to relax now. Yeah. Take it easy and. Um, Jason, you know, there's uh, there's so much we can talk about here, and for those who don't know, 
Uh, I'm sure we, we should probably start off by asking you this question here. I'm sure many people are wondering what initially sparked your interest in, I guess, the paranormal and the metaphysical realm. I, it wasn't an interest that was sparked. It was, it was part of my, my life um, ever since I could remember. Um, had pre-birth memories, past life memories, you know, having shadow figures taking you out of your body and from your bedroom as a young child. <laughs> um, that sounds nice. Yeah, I having poltergeist activity. Ooh, poltergeist so, activity. Yes, like ghosts wow. and weird, weird stuff going on in the house when I was a child. And then um, going into my early 20s, um, started having sleep paralysis and started having out-of-body experiences. And then the entities and other beings started to come visit. Right, <laughs> this is... And this and that. So this, that, that's yeah. when everything popped off, is in my early 20s. Ah, uh, that's when it all began. Uh, the whole sleep paralysis, that started a little bit later in your life. It seems like a lot of people that I talk to in regards to astral projection, that sort of deal, it all seemed to start rather, at, for them, and for myself too, it started pretty early. I, I might have been like four, 15, wow. 14 or 15 when I had the whole old hag syndrome sort of thing happen to me, which I'm sure you also experienced. Everyone seems to go through that. Yeah, yeah. I mean... But you had it later. Yeah, I was about uh, 22 years old, I believe of 22 years old. That must and, have scared uh, the hell out of you at that age. Yeah, like um, I was fresh out of college like fresh out of college and instead of going to a regular job me and my best friend decided to open a recording studio oh, and a graphic perfect. design place love that and um and you know when i look back at that it, it just makes me laugh because you know being 21 22 yeah. you know you're having the time of your life doing that and um, that's when it started i guess i was having too much fun <laughs> you know something had to drastically change my my projection into the world mm. or out of the world and started having these uh, sleep paralysis episodes and um, they were they were very frequent that's all i can say is that they would come at least a couple times a week if not every night Sorry, motorcycles passing by you got the bikers out there huh you got the bike oh, yeah i'm nice. out in the country we got bikers Anyways, um, so we um, are, started having these um, sleep paralysis episodes, and at first I had no idea what was going on. It's just extremely frightening. Um, you know, you wake up, your mind is screaming for you to move, and you're basically frozen inside your body. But what started to happen, you know, awakened all the things that went on in my childhood. It was, uh, I started to feel things entering my bedroom, <laughs> things walking around, things coming and sitting on the bed. You, and I know a lot of other people have experienced this, but like you'll feel, you'll be in sleep paralysis, you'll feel something in the room with you, and then it will go sit on the bed. Yeah. And like you feel the bed go down, like there's a weight, something sits on your bed. And, you know, because we grow up with media and, movies you immediately go to fear like this is a alien abduction this is um demonic entity you know so you're you're not only stuck in terror but you're 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 so fearful of what is this intrusion in your bedroom which is supposed to be your safe place where you're supposed to be sleeping right and um it's it was happening so often that i was getting used to the feeling of it yikes you know and so it's like i became very like in tune to the experience so it's like i could feel the presence not even in my bedroom i could feel it outside my bedroom the presence wow and as i could feel it outside my bedroom i go oh no it, it's coming and then i could feel my body shutting down going into sleep paralysis and then I could feel it walking around the room and I became 
so desensitized to the experience that it became just common. And what was very strange was that um, in that state, it felt like I had another body within my body. So it's like I can move my body inside my body, which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like you have two bodies. And so like, I'm trying to get out of it one night and kind of screaming and thrashing around inside my body. And I always say, you know, your body becomes your sarcophagus. You're like basically pounding inside your body to wake up. It's, it, it's like a horror movie for right. sure. It's like a horror movie. Yeah. If you have never experienced that, ladies and gentlemen, it is a very horrifying feeling because your eyes are open, but you can't move at all. I mean, for, for me personally, my eyes were open I thought, and I saw this dark figure on top of me. And I couldn't yeah. move. Yeah. And, you know, you'll feel this thing climb up on top of you. It's not a good feeling. It almost feels like it's suffocating you. You can't breathe. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like they're trying to reach inside of you and pull you out, which is, you know, it's like it's, it's an entity trying to kill me or take over my body. Like, this is where your mind goes. Yeah. Essentially, that's what they were trying to do to you. I guess. Yeah. In my opinion. And, and uh, you know, one night I just had enough of it and I was shaking so hard to wake up that I shook so hard I popped myself out and it was exactly like we, what people describe in a near-death experience because suddenly without warning I was outside of my body and I you know you go right to the ceiling I'm looking down from the ceiling and I'm looking at myself laying in bed and I'm like stiff as a board on my back with my eyes open just like you said right right and that's freaky yeah that is crazy like that the first time seeing your body when you're outside of it is the most insane feeling you you probably ever have an experience on this i call this i call it the cosmic slap oh the cosmic slap i like that because it's it's a slap of reality because at that moment you become very aware that this is not a dream this is not a hallucination that you are dead and this is your body and you exist right. in another world or another state outside the physical world that we know. And it, it's a stark slap of reality because that world, when you experience that, it's like that world has more weight than this world. That world is more real than this world. It's like, this is the fake world. You know, this is the illusion. So it, you immediately know the reality that you're in, you know, you're not going, Oh my God, I'm dreaming. <laughs> Wake up. Yeah. No, that goes away. Like, you're like, no, I just killed myself. Now I'm dead. I'm above my body. It's, it's just like what they talk about. And then I realized that there's this giant shadow figure standing at the foot of my bed. And it really did look like the Grim Reaper without wow. the sickle. It just looked like this giant shadow with form that had like a, a, a giant hood on, you know, it was all black. And, you know, you automatically think it's the Grim Reaper. You know, this thing is going to take you away. Um, and I got, it, it, it shook me up so much. Like it scared the crap out of me so badly that I, I got, it sucked my soul back into my body. I woke up with my heart pounding. And ever since that moment, um, I've walked in two worlds. That's the only way I could describe it. Ever since that moment, all my sleep paralysis stopped. At that instant, it stopped. And I, you know, everybody's like, oh my God, that's like a really bad demon or something mm. standing at your bed or anything like that. And the more... At first, yeah, I did think that, but like the more I study the experience, the more I learned about it, it's almost like that thing is actually a part of you. It's like an aspect of you and ancient cultures knew all about this. And for me, I, like I, the only thing I can call it is the initiator because it initiated me to wake up in the other world. It didn't do anything else to me. It just put me in the right state, which is a very fearful state. Right, right. But it put me in that state of being that allowed me to learn how to separate myself from the physical world and to journey into the spirit world 
or the astral realm or whatever labels anybody wants to call it. But um, that is that is my origin story. Yeah, yeah, that's how it began. But that's how it all began. And then the next thing that happened, which was still the worst experiences of my life. And um, this is where, um, well, you know, if I just back up a little, it's like sure. when I first learned how to leave my body, um, I was very fear fearful, obviously, still. Um, I wouldn't really venture outside my bedroom. So I'd kind of just like watch myself as I slept and just like, you know, went around the room, you know, just simple things. And then I got the courage to kind of like go out and go through the house and, you know, look out the window or go outside. But I was afraid if I go too far, um, I may not be able to get back in my body. You know, so there was a real fear because I didn't have any teachers. I didn't, you know, have any books on the subject. I, it was just me jumping into it. Like I didn't know what I was doing. I was just doing it. And, um, I, I like to say that, um, beings took notice that I was playing out of my body because then I started to get all this visitation and contact experience. Hmm. Um, and these beings, I don't know who they were. Um, the, the only way I could describe them is they were invisible. They were invisible. That's it. That's, that's the only description they like, you can, you know, the, the predator look where they, ah, they, they turn like invisible. A, yeah. Like a transparent sort of look. Yes. So you can, you can kind of see them, you can mm. kind of see their outline and you know, they're there. You can feel their presence. You can see them walking around, but it's like a distortion of invisibility. I see. And these beings, whoever they were, you know, cause they didn't speak or say anything to me. They would, again, they would come into the room and just pull me directly out of my body. So it's like, imagine this for a second. You're, sure. you're, you're sleeping in bed. You're, you're a normal person. Okay. You're having a normal dream, normal dream, sleeping in bed. And instantly you feel something reach in your body and yank you out. You know how like disturbing that is very. So now I'm outside my body. I don't know what is going on. You know, you're very disorientated because it's like, and fearful because you don't know what is happening because something else is taking you. And then the next, in an instant, it's like they would shoot me up into space. So it's like that Google earth effect, hmm. you know, when you zoom out on the planet, right? I'm going up into space. I could see the planet and then I, we stop in space and we're looking down at the planet still there's no communication there's nothing it's just i'm observing and then they shoot me back down to a location on the planet and they just drop me off like here you go <laughs> they just drop me off in some location and it's just the worst places you can possibly imagine like it will it's psychologically damaging to you to be there that's all i'll say so they drop you off in basically like carnage of destruction of, you know, all these like scenes of, like you say, the world ending and basically it was world ending. Like I've never seen anything like this, not even in movies. This is like crazy, crazy stuff. And, um, you know, they didn't hold back. Like, you know, I, I see things I still don't describe because why would I ever do that? Oh, <laughs> you know? it was too dark. It's just, it's horrible. Right. And so I, I, I'd, I'd observe, observe whatever is going on in the environment where I'm left, you know, see whatever's happening. And then I guess when I've had enough, I get taken again, back up into space and then back down into the planet, into my body. And I wake up and this is, and then I, you know, I'm, I'm 22 years old at this time. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a baby, 22 years old, right? Sure. Um, if I'm white as a ghost, I can't speak after these experiences. Who am I going to tell? Like if I tell my friends, they'd laugh at me. If I tell my family, they'll go see a doctor. You know, it's like, you, you know, it's insane. You know, right. you can't talk about this stuff. Um, and I'm sure you wanted to figure out what was happening to you. And I was just about to ask you, um, since all of this was going on early, you know, early on in your life there, 
and you were having all these experiences, did you ever seek to maybe talk to like, let's say someone who was religious or anything like that? Hilarious. I, I, <laughs> I'm sure you did. I did. Of course there you did. go. Yes. Um, the first person I went to, I have did. too. So this is kind of funny to me. <laughs> um, I, I went to a rabbi out of all people and I like, it was just a weird thing. Like, um, I was at a, a wake for somebody and, um, uh, so it was, you know, the theme was death, right? Right. And so the rabbi was there and, you know, giving his condolences and his, you know, you know his prayers and, um, he was kind of alone in the corner. So, you know, just kind of snuck up to him and he said, Hey, you know, can I, can we sit down and talk for a little? <laughs> I'm telling you, when I laid it out for him, I can just see in his eyes that he had, like, he couldn't help me. You know, it's just, it was, it was not in his comprehension. I, so I felt even more alone that it's like, okay, this person doesn't know how to help me. Um, and then, um, and then I started to look into more religious things. And like I said, like, when these things were happening to me. Like I didn't, um, I didn't really have a religion. Like I, I, I was, I don't know, how would you even describe it? It was not in my mind back then. And, um, when these things started happening, especially the doomsday stuff, um, you know, seeing potential futures, um, I started praying really hard. I became religious very quickly. <laughs> And I started to pray to every God, you know, started with the Christian God and, you know, just pray, 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 please stop this. I don't want to, you know, go through this again. I don't want to see this stuff. Stop showing it to me. So, you know, when people have their awakening experiences and they talk about like these breakthrough experiences of like, you know, seeing God or, you know, just like the most epic experiences that are like positive. I'm like, man, uh, that, that's amazing. That's not what I went through. <laughs> you know? Right. That is not what I went through. And um, yeah, but it it did stop. So um, I, I, I guess it was too much for me. Uh, I just couldn't take it. Um, so those experience, experiences to the future, which I can only describe as the future for my limited understanding of any of this, um, it stopped, but then a new journey opened up, you know, so things change. Right. Right. But that's how I got into this. And the craziest thing about this is I was so lost, like when this started happening and right, you were, I started, mm -hmm. I started to like go seek people. Like I went to like different psychics and channelers and shamans and, and medicine people. Like I went everywhere just because I had all these questions and I right. wanted to know if this happens to other people, because remember, this is 2002, you know, Facebook didn't start till 2005, right? And um, YouTube wasn't till 2006 or something. It was, it was still like seven, actually, yeah, or 2007. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so think about that. Like, I, I had to, I went to the library <laughs> to try to figure this stuff out, right? You know? People don't understand that these days. No, it's not like, at all. They, they'll they never get that. They they just go on TikTok and they get everything. Right, or you know? Google. With me, I'm like, okay, I don't know who to talk to. So I started to like seek out like psychics and channelers and, and all these things. And and they, I'll, I'll just say that I, I was left very empty from those experiences because nobody could help me. Right. Like, yeah. Not even the channelers, not even the psychics. Like when I would describe these things to them, I would just get like blank stares and then like no answers. Um, the only person that really helped me was my cousin, um, who was a, a Qigong uh, teacher and, um, and a, a channeler as well. And she, she did really help guide me. And she's the one who introduced me to uh, the Algonquin shaman. And then once I met the Algonquin shaman, it's like, the, um, the native traditions, they never lost this knowledge. So it's like, I'll talk to him and he knows exactly what I'm talking about. And he could describe everything that I'm talking about and knows 
how to navigate those worlds. So for me, that was like a huge awakening for me that there, there are people on this planet right now that for them, this knowledge is completely normal. It's everyday life for them. And that's what blew me away. But it took me a while to like find that. To find you know? that, yeah. And once I found that, I was like, man, I found my tribe. Yeah. Like I'm home, you, you know, belong. they speak my language. Yeah. And uh, that's, you know, when I quit my job, quit the studio. Um, you moved I, on. I moved on. I went into energy medicine. Um, I, I, um, I went under uh, the Algonquin shaman. I wanted to be taught um, shamanism. I wanted to learn traditional medicine. Um, and that, that is what, like, that's what I'll say saved me. Is, is that because it gave me um, a focus and it gave me answers and it, it strengthened me to um, learn more and to navigate those worlds. And again, this is right before or right at the beginning of social media and of YouTube and all these things. So for me, uh, like, you know, we started the show off, you know, how did you like contact in the desert? I'm like, that's, that's vacation for me. Right. Because that's what I used to do 20 years ago, is that I would show up at these conferences as a, as a tourist, <laughs> you know, and walk around and just talk to people and, and find out if they shared that common experience with me. And that's how I got into the dowsing circles. And that's how I got pulled into um, the Alien Cosmic Expo. And that's how I got pulled in to meeting uh, Bob Mitchell and getting introduced to the community with the UFOs. Right. So it, it's been a long journey. It's been a long journey to get here. And the, the reason why, I mean, the UFO community is very interesting because when I was having these out-of-body experiences, remember... I knew they were out-of-body experiences to begin with because I've done them hundreds of times, right? So I'm used to being out of body. I'm used to having these visitations. And some of the beings that would come to me in the out-of-body um, state were the same beings that people describe in abduction scenarios. Mm, yes. So, and this is what me and Bob Mitchell would always talk about. Right. Is that, is it a physical abduction or is it an out of body experience? Right. Through the astral plane. Yes. And from my experience, I like, I'll say this right now, which, you know, I've, I've repeated it so many times in the past. I've never had a physical contact experience ever. It's, and when I say physical contact, it's like, I'm awake. Yeah. I'm like, just hanging out somewhere and suddenly a being comes and talks to me that's a that, that's another physical being that's not from this world that has never ever happened to me or maybe they wipe my mind i don't know you know you know i'll believe anything right but from my perspective that's never happened what does happen is that in the out of body state you enter into this astral world spiritual realm other dimension you know, I, I haven't found a word that describes it properly. And these beings are there. And it's weird. It's, it's so weird. It's like the, the weirdest ones are the mantids. And people describe the mantids all the time. And I used to have these mantids uh, wake me up in the middle of the night. Mm. And they're, they're terrifying. I don't like that. They're, ter they're huge. Their heads are touching the ceiling. They're, they're big things. And their heads are big. Like, uh, how do I describe their head? They're, the head is like maybe three times the size of your head. It's a big head. And it's like they don't have any boundaries or they don't understand boundaries. So it's like, I don't know. I, don't, I sound like a crazy person right now. But basically, you, you you get woken up, you leave your body, and this thing is like, its face is like a couple inches from your face. Mm. <laughs> so imagine just waking up Ooh. out of like a sleep, and yeah. this manted face is like, like really right in front of you. It's like, 
it's too close to you. And you fr- like, I don't care how many times this happens. You freak out every time because it's like your sleep is disruptive. You, like you don't know if there's an intruder in your house. And this is another thing um, is that if, if you don't know what the out of body experience is like, it's more real than being awake. Okay. So you have to f- understand that first. So somebody that's never or not consciously has had an out of body experience, if they're woken up in the middle of the night and they see mantids or greys in their bedroom and they start freaking out, for them, it, it may in their mind be a hundred percent of physical interaction. But suddenly they're they're disappeared. It's like they wake up and there's nobody there, like just vanished out of thin air, right? Right. So you wake up and they're gone. It's like a dream. They're gone. But you know it's real. So it's like, oh my God, like I was just in an abduction. Or they take you or they take you out of bed and you're floating up above the, the, the bed and you go through the walls. Like suddenly you have like tractor beam technology where the atoms of the wall break down and like your physical body is goes through the wall, right? But for me, that's a, that what you're describing is the out of body state. So, you know, people who have a lot of these experiences, they'll want to prove it to people. So they'll set up cameras in their bedroom, right? Because, yeah, it's like the mantids come all the time, the graves come all the time, and I'm going to capture them on camera. And they'll set up the camera, they'll go to sleep, and they'll have this experience of this abduction experience and the greys will be there or the mantids will be there, whoever. And you, they'll wake up so excited and they're like, yes, I got it. I got it on film. And then they'll look at the footage and it's just footage of them sleeping in bed. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh my God, they're so advanced that they, they learned how to edit themselves yeah, out they, of the video. Yeah. They erased the video or they, they record over. time. They stopped yeah. time, right? Abducted you and put you back without anybody noticing or even the sheets changing, right? So this is the debate because I'm not, I know there's people out there that have had physical contact. I, yeah, I hear stories all the time of people talking about physical contact and, and who am I to say, no, you didn't. Right, right, right. Like, I can't say that because I don't know. What I, what I talked about with Bob is we tried to come up with like a, a percentage number. You know, how many cases... So let's say we have like a hundred cases in front of us, which he did. He had a hundred cases of experiencers saying they had contact. And we go through those hundred cases with a different set of eyes. And we would say that like 95 plus percent of those things follow the exact same pattern as an out of body experience. And then you're getting to like the very, very rare ones, maybe five or less percent, which is like some type of physical interaction with something you know so for me it's not like one or the other it's yeah. like why can't there be both type of experiences i understand yeah that, that's too close uh for me how so well you said 95 percent. i mean that's pretty um i'm, I'm not saying that in a, in a bad way i'm just saying like wow that's that's pretty close yeah yeah so it's like when you start to break down the out of body experience, you know, you start to say, okay, your body becomes numb, right? There's like a vibration. You'll hear weird mechanical sounds. You may see like lights, it's like weird lights going on and off in the bedroom. You'll start to like feel like you're ri- raising off the bed. And then you'll, you'll pass through the ceiling or pass through, then you'll go into a light. And there, you're going to be met with beings, you know? Yeah, you see, you've gone way further than I ever have. You know, the most I've ever been able to do was, like, barely leave the house. Just sort of be outside of the front uh, front lawn there for me. Yeah, and uh, this is like, so what you're describing, what you're doing is that's like the first step, which is like getting comfortable with being outside the body. Uh, And then it it progresses, but I look, I have no idea the reason why it happens to some people and not others or why it stops and then starts again. And the only explanation that I have is that it has to do with the stars. 
Like it literally has to do with starlight. Interesting. And uh, it has to do with uh, the planets. It has to do with uh, your um, the planets you were born under, the sun and the moon that you were born under. And it's like everybody has this kind of resonance inside of them that's been crystallized during birth or coming into this planet. It's like we're imprinted with a frequency. And then when certain planets or stars are in, in alignment, if that, that frequency is resonant, suddenly you're going to have a spiritual experience. Um, so that's one way I believe that this happens. Because again, I wasn't asking for any of this to happen. It just happened. I yeah, didn't... I was though. I, I mean, I was trying to make it happen um, through through different uh, techniques you can use to sort of leave your body. And of course, the very first one I ever learned was the ladder. How's that one? Well, you just imagine there's like a, a wooden ladder like in front of your bed or no. maybe even on the bed and you just climb. Some people use a rope. I just uh, kept imagining a ladder being on the bed or sometimes it would be outside of the bed and I would just climb it and that's how I would do it. Huh. Yeah, you just kept kept doing repetitions of it and eventually it happened. And wow. again, it scared the hell out of me and you know, for some odd reason, I talked to a, a pastor about it and you know, he obviously didn't really want to talk about it as he, he thought I was practicing the occult, he said. Yeah. He said, this is sorcery. Yeah. So, you know, needless to say, I didn't really talk to him again after that. He didn't want to talk. See, I was, I was, a, I'm not a good visualizer. Uh, I'm really not. I, for me, it's, it's a feeling. It's like you, you go, it's like, how do I describe this? I mean, I'm a very you, visual sort of man, uh, m a mind. Yes. Yeah. I'm the complete opposite. I'm, I'm a feeling guy. Ah. And so like, I'll go to sleep. You're an empath. Yes. So I'll go to sleep and some nights you just, you just fall asleep normally. Like I'm, I, I, I just go to bed. There's no intention. Yeah. I just go to bed. And, but if I become aware of falling into the sleep, okay. There's like, there's a state in between. Um, I think they call it the hip, hypnogon, hypnotic state. How do you say that? Anyways. Um, your listeners will know what I'm talking about. Um, basically sometimes when you fall asleep, your mind will be active and you'll, you'll go down the steps almost of falling asleep. So your body starts to fall asleep, just like a sleep paralysis, right? but your mind remains aware that the body is falling asleep mm -hmm. and it's a very, very short window. It's like, um, it's like if if you don't catch it in time, you're just gonna pass out and go yeah, to sleep. Yeah, there, there is a small window of time when you can do that. Yes, absolutely. So, so it's like, and it's a feeling. It's like it's the moment you feel that warm vibration of the body going to sleep, and the mind is awake. It's like that's when I I use the I call it the roll technique, or it's almost just like you're willing. You kind of like shift your inner body, your astral body. See, I, I don't like these names because they're loaded names. They're it's very something loaded, else. But, but yeah, I, I'm, I understand what you're saying, though. And it's like I'm you with move, you. You, you kind of will the movement of that body and you push it out. And, and then you come out and then, you know, and then whatever happens next, um, you're, you're only in control for a short amount of time. Um, so, you know, I hear stories all the time of people doing astral travel and they're like, okay, let's go to the moon. Let's go to Mars. Let's have a party. Let's go visit our friends. Um, that has never happened to me. Same ever. here. I, I've never ever. experienced that either. For me, it's like you have the will. So you're in control up until the moment you're out of the body and you're like, okay, now I'm out of my body. Now what? And it seems to me like that shadow, that higher aspect of yourself, right? whatever you do at night, whatever your energy does at night, um, travel to different dimensions, go through time, you know, whatever it does, sometimes it lives more than one life. So you're, you know, you're transferring your energy to some other living being somewhere else and they're having a life, you know, it's a, it's a multi-dimensional experience, but the trick is 
how does Jason or Michael stay aware? So how do how do we keep our awareness of our mind active as Jason, as Michael, to experience that journey and retain those memories? That is that is the challenge. That's the hard part. Yes. Uh, same with um, same with uh, having these very vivid dreams that I usually have. You know, I never really remember the beginning. Just usually the middle part, and it's always fragmented. And that's kind of also how I view. Uh, remote viewing at times, remote viewing, uh, astral projection at times. Sorry about that. I don't know why I said remote viewing, but well, uh, yeah, go ahead. You're, you're reading my mind because that's another thing that, um, you know, a lot of people say, um, describe an experience that's a remote viewing experience and right. they call that an out of body experience. It's around the, it's pretty much the same almost. Yeah. But if it, um, see, I, for me, I can't do that. Um, I'm not a visual person, yeah, but I, I know people that can, that can, they can yeah. just close their eyes and say, oh, I want to like, see this place. I want to go here and they go there, but they're still like in their body with their eyes closed and you can talk to them. So it's almost like a remote viewing channeling type of thing, but right. they're there, they're projecting their consciousness somewhere else. Like that's crazy. That is crazy. I haven't achieved that sort of sort of deal before, but astral projecting, I've done it uh, a lot of times. Sometimes, again, on, on accident, you know, just naturally happens for some people like yourself. For me, I have to really try to go at it. See, now it's like I enjoy sleeping. Oh, well, of course. And, yeah. And, and things change when you get married. Like, of course, yeah. Now you're married, you know, you got to go to sleep with the wife. When I was alone in your own bed, in your own space... It was much easier, you know, when you have someone sleeping beside you, um, it's, you know, it happens, but not as much, but yeah, I think it's, because it's, your, your mind is so aware that there's a body next to you. That's probably why. So it's some, like, you're kind of distracted like maybe perhaps something like that, but oh man, I've had some crazy experiences, paranormal experiences with my wife. Oh, really? What'd you guys see? Uh, well, I, I, there's a, there's a list. I, I'm just trying to think of a good what one. I should share publicly and what I shouldn't share publicly, but like, oh, I'll tell you a crazy one. Um, like, um, my wife is getting ready for bed mm -hmm. and I'm just so tired. So I'm in bed already. I'm going to sleep. And, um, so she's getting ready for bed in the washroom and then she, she walks out of the washroom. I see her walking around the bed. And then she gets into the bed under the covers and I feel her body next to me, right? Like I see her in the room. She comes in, lays down next to me, gets under the covers, right? Right. And then I'm like, okay, she's in bed. Like I can just go to sleep. And then like, I'm like, I feel her next to me. And like five minutes later, the bathroom door opens and she walks out and Ooh. I freaking jumped out of that bed. <laughs> just jump. And there was nothing in the bed with me. Were you guys at home? Where were you? Yeah, we were home. Oh, you guys were home, not like yeah. a hotel or anything. No, no. I was like, I still can't explain that because for me, it was her. I'm like, did her, did her astral body or some her spiritual body or mm. whatever it was, did it come to bed first? Wow. And then her body came after. Came after, yeah. Like it was so weird, but. Yeah, that spooked me. Like, I jumped right out of bed and screamed, <laughs> like, what the hell? Right. What, what did she say about that? She was just like, go to sleep. She's like, come on, Jason. <laughs> She's like, come on, go to sleep. That didn't just happen. I'm like, yeah, that just happened. Wow. Yeah. So she didn't understand, though, at first. No, no, but she's but she, she's very psychic, yeah. my wife. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, she, we've had a lot of experiences together. We've even had UFO experiences together, which I would separate from the paranormal. I would, you know, I would say paranormal is like outside of this world where, um, like the UFOs where you're actually sitting outside and watching a craft like in the sky, that's, that's a physical thing you're watching with your eyes. Right. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. And by the way, are you familiar with, uh, Robert Monroe? Yes. Yes. I Love a lot of uh, his work, and I've talked to a lot of people that have actually been to the Monroe Institute. Yeah, wish yeah, I could go here. myself. Actually, I've been that would have been cool. 
I, I again from and this is where I'm weird is that like for me, these experiences are like so personal. Mm. Well, yeah, they are though, no doubt. And, and um, you have to be comfortable. Like if I can't leave my body when I'm sleeping next to like my wife, do you think I'm going to do it with strangers? Like, <laughs> right, yeah. Good, yeah, in that's an, true. In, in an institute that's like connected to the CIA, like give me a break. Right. It's another sort of concern. And obviously you're familiar with uh, the steps, right, of that he described, the different um, um, levels. I, it's been a very long time. Um, I think I got those books from the library. That's how far back it was. <laughs> they were, they were called like focus levels, if I recall. Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I remember I wasn't, I was using, um, I think it was hollow sync. Was he part of hollow sync? Um, I or is that something what, else? I think that might be something else, but, um, anyways, the, these yeah. sort of the, this, uh, these focus levels that he created, some of them, you know, they, they talk about like, you know, going to space, going to different planets. And there was a place called like the park. And that's kind of where, you know, your relatives and friends are that have deceased that have, that are now deceased rather. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure you perhaps might have, um, gone not, through something like that. Maybe not, not like, not like he's describing, um, never, never like that. Not like that. No, I mean, I, I've dealt with a a lot of different ghosts and a man I could, if we sat around the campfire I could tell you stories man um <laughs> maybe maybe that's nice. what this is it's a digital campfire that's right and um it was well there's different levels of ghosts I would say I would say the most personal is your own family um I I've, I've been visited by every single family that's ever died have you and, they they would come to me either instantly the moment they pass or they'd come a couple months later um, and did you have anyone in your family that you didn't really want them to be bothering you like that no it's um, oh, okay i mean that was kind of a joke but <laughs> there no it's, it's a profound experience yeah it's, yeah it's like i know the emotions are so intense Ooh. um because obviously it's a loved one yeah that's passed and they've come in their divine essence to communicate with you communicate yeah. or acknowledge that they're okay and that this is the way it is and they'll be there like it, it's like you're crying man i don't care who you are you're crying yeah you <laughs> like wake up in this, tears yeah when this happens you're 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 down yeah um and then there's the experiences of uh, people that you have no clue who they are and they'll come to you um, wake you up in the middle of the night in the astral, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, um, and remember, it's like, you know, you could feel a presence in the room, but you can't see or communicate with them. It's like but the moment I leave my there. body, it's like, there they are. Yeah. They're just it's there. Like, and, um, uh, many of them come to you. Um, they, they want to tell you how they died. Like usually they start with that. They want to tell you how they died. And then, um, they usually come to you, um, they don't have a message for you. They, they want your assistance. And, um, what I learned is that, uh, for some reason we have a power in our physical body. Um, this is why we're physical, but we're like a portal. We're like a doorway, a beacon. I like to say, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we could become a channel for these spirits to pass to where they need to go. I don't know how or why this works, but it just does. It just, it's part of the rules or whatever these things are. But I remember, and I wrote this in Forbidden Knowledge. It's a great story. Um, Cause I had, I had like experiences when I went to Peru, like every day, it was like the psychic, the psych, the psychic part of me just turned on when I went to Peru. That, yeah. It, you, yeah. Something resonated with you out there, obviously. And, you know, I was just about to ask you, and it seems like you are reading my mind in a way. I was just about to ask you if you could sort of like describe maybe a particular memorable experience you had exploring the astral plane. Well, when, when I was in, um, Lake Titicaca, we stayed, um, with a family that lived on the mount, lived on the island, and it was this giant hill. This, ah, this. Beautiful, and it sounds like already. Yeah, it, it was gorgeous, uh, but 
they don't have electricity. You know, they don't have they they only grow their own food. And I slept on a straw bed, you know, with a sheet on it. You know, so it's like you're really out there. You know, yeah. when it was five o'clock at night and the, the you know the sun went away, you went to bed at like five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, but yeah, anyway, so I'm I'm in this hut, not a hut. What do I want to say? It's like a cabin, um, and I'm sleeping on the straw mattress. And it's like I wake up in the middle of the night, and my room is filled. It's literally filled. There's like I don't know twenty, thirty deceased people standing in the room all trying to talk to me at the same time. And they're all natives of this island or ancestors of this island. And they keep, hmm. tr they keep tr like taking my consciousness. And, and the, what I mean by that is it's like one of them will get your attention and then suddenly they'll sh like, I'll see the vision of them living their life. And they're trying to tell me how they lived and how they died. And then it's like flashes out and then another being in the room, another ancestor flashes their life and their memories and their death in your mind. So, you know, this was crazy. It's like, you know, you're trying to go to sleep in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> yeah. on a straw bed, and just surrounded by like 20, 30 ancestors trying to communicate with you at night to you tell sound, you. Uh, you sound like you're a medium now. Right. This doesn't just, ha like, this hasn't happened since. Uh -huh. It's like something happened to me in Peru. Like right. for some reason, these things just turned on. And so that's what's happening. And like I, phys I literally see them in the room in the astral, not physically. Right, right. And um, I woke up the next morning and I went to the family. The <laughs> don't speak English. They don't even speak Spanish. They, they speak the original tongue, right? Right. I have no way of communicating with them. And I, I, I said to the old man, I, I said, you know, the ancestors came to me and I have to do a ceremony to, to help them, you know, Ooh. because that was the whole theme. Like I had to, I came to the Island. I needed to help them. Right. And that's why there were so many of them bothering me. What, what did he tell you? He didn't say anything. He, mm -hmm. he just looked at me and he just like with his eyes signaled me to, to follow him. Maybe he knew already. He did. He, did he know. knew. He, yeah. He took me on this like path, we went up this mountain on the island and he takes me to this stone and it's just a stone, like just a random stone sitting on the ground. And he, he takes it like a little flower. He picks up a little flower and he puts it on the stone and he just kind of like puts his hand out. So it's like gesture, do what you got to do type of thing. So then I just sat there and, and meditated and, you know, added my own flower and, and did the things and an next, offering, yeah, yeah. And next mm -hmm. night, I slept like a baby, nope. like a baby. No, nope, yeah. no, nope. nothing's bothering me. <laughs> you did the right thing. So yeah, it's like it's like straight out of a movie. Yeah, man. it's like it's like, like a straight like, out of a kickboxing movie from right. the eighties. Like, who could, who could I tell this to? Like how how can I share this like with someone outside of this community? That's why I love this community so much because I can actually like tell these stories yeah well this community is actually very open-minded and you know yeah. these sort of experiences are profound and some people out there obviously have definitely experienced these sort of things before exactly exactly so uh, like it it happens it just happens and, and ghost stories they're like my favorite like i don't know it's it's weird because it, it scares you there's a lot of fear involved in it but then it's like once you calm down, it's, it's very rich. It's very rich. And it's like, I could just keep going. If you want me to keep going, I got lots of these stories. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you want to another, if you could share another story that you found, um, the most terrifying, I'd love to hear that. Is there one where you thought you might be dying or on the verge of dying? Something that crazy, uh, Jason? Uh, yeah. Oh shit. Uh, lots of those. Uh, lots of know, them. Yeah. Um, you, you know, people wow. say if you die in the astral, like you die in real life. They say that. And I've had entities like try to rip me apart, try to kill me, try to, like all these things. For no and, reason. They just wanted to kill you. Yeah. And they'll like put you in scenarios like to make you think that you did die. Mm. And how's that not terrifying? It is yeah, terrifying. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, because it's like you experience going through death. 
or they put the illusion of you going through death. Wow. To and uh, but I, I wake up the next morning fine. So I, you know, you live, you learn, right? Uh, but I would say like the, one of the most frightening ghosts that I've seen and the, this, like, this is crazy. It's like, and this is like right when me and my wife started uh, dating. Um, so this is, this is like 12 years ago, maybe 13 years back, ago. Yeah. And um, we went to like a wedding and, you know, she's still living at her parents' house. I went and slept over there after the wedding and um, I'm sleeping in the bed and a, a spirit walks up to the bed or a ghost walks up to the bed and kind of like pulls on the covers and then like pulls them on my hand. And I, you know, I wake up and I look and it was like, it was like straight out of a horror movie. It was like, um, I see this little girl and it's like a little girl, little blonde girl. And it was like, her face was like mutilated, like something really bad happened to her. Like she was just like gory and bloody, you know? Ooh. Yeah. And, you know, and the blood is down her, you know, and she's a little girl, right? And so she's pulling on my hand and I wake up to this. I like, I screamed like, <laughs> I, like, get the fuck away. Oh, shoot. I don't know if I want to say that. No, but like, just that. get so, yeah. away from me, right? Get right. the hell out, out of my, you know, but like. Like I'm screaming like a little girl because this is like, you know, That's right terrifying. after the horror movie, yeah. right? No doubt. And my heart is pounding out of my chest. And then I, I, something clicked inside of me like I'm an asshole. <laughs> like it just clicked on me. It's like I'm a huge asshole. Wow. That I, that I just did this to this little girl. Why would you uh, think that? I mean, I'd be thinking the opposite. I'd be thinking she's the asshole for showing up here. <laughs> no, it was just like a moment of clarity. Like, oh, just, I see, I see. I'm it. like, it was like I just thought, like, oh my god, I'm an asshole, and I, I, I calmed down, and I came to again, and she's still there, she's still standing by the bed, still watching you, still watching me, still looking the way she looks, Ooh, creepy, very creepy. But I said, it's all right. You're here with me now. What do you need? Come talk to me. I'm here. You know. Right. So I changed. I changed. And when I did that, it was like, it was like the heavens opened. Like, I can't describe this experience. It's like, it's emotional thinking about it. It's like the heavens opened. Mm -hmm. And she was then taken to where she needed to go. And it was like, it was beautiful. But like, think of how that experience started and how it ended, you know, and it was just a change of perception of I'm the idiot. You went through a lot of emotions there. <laughs> right. In a short span very, of time. Very quickly. Very yeah. quickly. But like I said, it's like when you think of horror movies, when you think of these type of events, yeah. it's like this is what people make movies of. Like they're they're terrifying. But it doesn't have to be terrifying. Like this is there, – there's a reason why something is presenting themselves in a, in a way that they're presenting themselves. And, and yes, you know, you could talk about, you know, harvesting fear, hmm. uh, like entities will try to scare the crap out of you or terrify you to get closer to you. And the, the challenge is, and this is what being a shaman is, is you have to learn the difference. You have to learn what entity is trying to take your energy and what, ener what entity is there that needs assistance. And that's, that's the training. You need to figure out the line of what to do in every situation. And um, did the parents hear you yelling by any chance? I hope not. I know, I was gonna say, maybe they heard you, <laughs> man, they never, they were too scared to tell you anything, Jason. They're like, you know, we heard this weird screaming, um, and I think it was the boyfriend. They were probably saying that at the table when you weren't around, oh, Jason. Oh my God, well. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't even think of, I didn't think of anybody at that time. I'm, I was very. Um, you were just scared, yeah. I was. I was just in my fear element, uh, fight or flight, adrenaline. Did the moment. girlfriend hear you screaming by any chance? Um, she woke up after. Oh, okay. After, I so hear it's you. like, yeah. So she knows. She knows the story quite well, and 
yeah, it's always fun having these things when there's someone else there. Yeah, well, of course. To experience them yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah, it's better to have a shared experience than it is to have one just by yourself. And that's pretty much why I'm here. You know, I had a shared experience way back in uh, 2016. I was even contemplating just quitting doing all this and yeah. uh, moving on with my life. And then I had an experience myself. And oddly enough, it was Contact in the Desert 2016 out in Joshua Tree. Very cool. In a hotel room. <laughs> as weird as that is, it was kind of a, it was kind of dark. The lights were kind of off. I'm there with a friend of mine. And all, out of nowhere, just this bright light just manifested itself into the room. And it engulfed the entire room in this white light, like the world's most powerful fluorescent light just wow. took over and even when i closed my eyes that light was still there and it lasted for a good i would say a good 10 seconds or so wow and, and your just, friend saw the same thing correct and it went wow. away and i'm like I, we were just quiet and i say did that happen did you did you see that too and yeah they did amazing it, i have the exact same story you, you do yeah no but way. A different colored light. A different colored light. It wasn't a white light. No, it was green. Green. What the hell is that, Jason? You know, I've talked to a lot of people. They give me all kinds of answers. David Sarita says they're light beans. I don't know if it was a light bean, to be honest. I don't know. I, I, I don't my, know. My answer is I have no clue. I don't either. Um, but um, I, I'm thinking that it's part of a natural earth phenomenon, and I'll tell you tell you why. It might be. Um. I've told this story so many times, but I'll just I hope your listeners haven't heard this before. But um, I, when I was living with my mother um, years ago, like I'm very into photography and all these things, and I had a next door neighbor, and he was into photography. And one night he calls me, he's like, "Jay, I just got this brand new camera. We got to go test it out." And there's this, there's a forest behind her houses, right? <laughs> and it's in the middle of the night. There's a oh, no. forest behind her house. And I'm like, okay, so I grab my camera, he has his, his new camera, and um, we're taking like night shots, go walking through um, the forest in the middle of the night. We're nuts. We're crazy kids, right? And uh, we see a light in the distance. Like this is kind of like a Travis Walton type story. We see a light in the distance. Nice. And it's a very bright light. It looks like, um, you know, like a, ro a road flare. Mm. It's exact, like identical to a road flare, but instead of red, it was green. So that's how intense that light was. And it was like illuminating the forest from this one like flare, this road flare light. And we were, we we're like, what the hell is that? And instead of going in the opposite direction, we walked right up to it. We, we just went right up to this light. It was there the whole time. Didn't change. We were standing right in front of it. We, we and we're like st and then we're standing on top of it we're looking at it from on top of this thing where i can touch it right and we're just dumbfounded because it's such a bright light just hovering over the ground um and it had no heat no sound no nothing it was just light and i i'm like i have a flat we both have flashlights i have a flashlight and what i did is i took the flashlight and i shined it on it to see if i can see anything else the moment I put the flashlight on it, it's gone, just disappeared instantly. Now, think about this for a second. We're out in the woods testing our cameras. We both are holding cameras in our hands. We see it from a distance. We walk right up to it and we're examining it. Do you think either of us took a damn picture? No. See, this is everybody's like, well, why you should have taken a picture? No, no. We no. were so enchanted right by what is this we were just it's like we didn't even think we were holding a camera yeah you're we frozen like, at that time we're like what is this <laughs> so it's like and then it just disappeared with the light so it's, i have no explanation of what we witnessed yeah these things just i guess happen yeah naturally and and um uh, it, what is it the the was it the brown mountain lights the brown mountain lights yeah you know there's all these lights over the mountains when we when i went to uh east seti ranch uh there's there's mount adams one two 
Um, and it, um, if you watch it at night, it's not all night, but it's like right at uh, dusk, like right when the sun goes down, suddenly you'll see lights popping up all over that mountain. Like it lights up like a Christmas tree. It's crazy. There's lots of footage of this. I even took pictures of it with my own camera. Um, and there's videos. So this is a real phenomenon. And, you know, everybody there is like, oh, yeah, those are those are aliens. Those are interdimensional ships. You know, they're, they're landing and taking off from the mountain. And I'm thinking, and this is from my observations of literally watching it night after night, exactly the, around the same time, exactly the same type of lights. Um, my hypothesis is that um, during the night when the sun goes down, the ionosphere, stratosphere, compresses. All right, so when the sun is out, the, the stratosphere actually bulges out. And then when it, the sun goes away, it compresses. And there's so much ionization, like literal plasma ionization in the air, in the atmosphere, that when the sun goes down at, uh, at, at, um, at nighttime, it condenses and pushes all these ions and the mountains or, or places on the earth that can receive the ions or the plasma, it accepts it. It's like a, it's like a lightning, but with plasma. So it's not like a, a flash of, of light. It's just the ions grounding themselves into the mountain. And we see this kind of luminous effect when that happens. That's my hypothesis. Um, I don't think anybody's ever th thought of it in that context. But um, it's like I've seen it so many times, and I know they're not ships. They're, they're not UFOs. It's something else. It is a natural phenomenon that we just don't understand yet. And that's at the East City Ranch, you said, right? Yes. Yes. Mount Adams. Mount Adams. Yeah, I have a friend, I think, who's been out there. And I think they also saw something pretty unusual, too. Yeah. I you go there, like, any night, like, in the summer, spring, and um, wow. just when the sun goes down, just... Keep your eyes on that mountain, and you're going to see these lights turn on and off all over the mountain. Bright, bright lights. Like, these aren't cars. These aren't flashlights. This is a phenomenon. It's the same thing as brown mountain lights. Very nice. Very nice. And, uh, Jason, by the way, do you have any um, any future books in the works right now? And I think you mentioned that already. And uh, it's just going to take you a bit longer. I, I, now I remember, Yes. Yeah, I have a lot of uh, projects I'm working on currently, which has kind of pushed everything into the future. Um, so I'm going to finish the next level of the Egyptian Postures book. Uh, Egyptian Postures of Power, uh, Movements, Mysticism um, is out right now. You can get that on Amazon. And my new book, Astral Genesis, you could also get that on um, Amazon. And Astral Genesis is about... Um, a secret knowledge about the movement of the stars and the sun and the moon and how it's encoded in almost all the most ancient artifacts around the world so that it's like the first knowledge is the stars so there's a star language um, so very interesting book and hopefully in a couple of years i'm going to write an experience or book where i'll tell all these great ghost stories and nice paranormal stories out of body experiences you definitely should yeah it's um i think it's time again but it's gonna take a while it'll be a, year a long process right it's gonna be a process but i hear you but again i i when i come on shows like yours you see how passionate i am sharing these things like it's so much fun talking about these experiences it is so it's a, it's, a yeah. it's a good thing and, uh, you know, I forgot to mention to you my whole experience, you know, leading up to that week to go to contact in the desert. I said, if I don't experience anything out there, I'm done. And sure enough, wow. the first night that happens to me. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> yeah, that's what I learned. Yeah. That's what I learned. Uh, but that's a good thing. Now I'm here and, you know, enjoying myself and having, you know, having you here, having uh, other great people like yourself, Jason. And I met you. 
uh, in person out there, you know, randomly. Yes. I didn't know you were going to be there. I didn't know I was going to be there. And the stars aligned and that's what happened. It's so much better to have the opportunity to actually be in the presence of somebody. Right. So it's like, I met you. We hung out. I know you. So it's like when you call me up now, it's like, hey, you know, it's like an old friend. Right. So it, it you make these amazing connections when you come to these uh, sort of, conferences, yeah. these events. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of these, uh, you know, this, again, we may see each other coming up at Disclosure Fest. If you're going to head out in that area, I don't know where you are, but Las Vegas, that's the next big one. Las Vegas at the Luxor. Disclosure yes. Fest. Yeah. Las Vegas, boys and girls. If you are out there, a resident of Las Vegas, definitely go check out the conference. And Jason, time flew by almost two hours with you here. And again, I do want to thank you for your time. Really do appreciate it. And it was awesome to meet you out there, Jason. I had a great time at the conference and a great time talking to you. I wish we could have talked more, but you know, I had to run around and cover the event and I had to go interview Clyde Lewis and you know, talk to Stephen Bassett and talk to all these other people. Yeah. Clyde Lewis is the man. He's a great guy, right? He, he is a wealth of information. He really is. Yeah. I like Clyde a lot, a lot of respect for him. And I have a lot of respect for you too, Jason. Thank you. Yes, you're a great man. And um, Jason will do it again on the other side, my friend. All right. Thank you so much. And there he goes, boys and girls. That was our guest, Jason Quid. And I do want to thank him for being a part of the program. And I want to thank all of you out there for pressing play. Much respect to all of you out there. Thank you guys for remaining Patreon members here. I do appreciate that wholeheartedly. And remember, if you guys haven't signed up to the newsletter, please go do so at michaeldeacon.com. That's where you can stay updated with all live shows and all information you need to stay up to date here with what's going on behind the scenes. Once again, boys and girls, we were here for a good time, not a long time. Will any of you try to astro project tonight? If so, let me know. If you've never tried it, maybe one of these days you should give it a try and see what happens. Well, maybe some of you are actually natural already and do it without even knowing. It might even explain some of the dreams you're having today. Who knows? Once again, thank you so much for pressing play. We'll see you again on the other side. And with that said, the world is a mysterious place and life itself is a mystery. Until next time, mahalo. Thank you.